right hey everyone welcome back to this channel this is Himanshu from Salesforce makes sense and in this video we are going to start looking at apex this is our apex masterclass series and we are all set to start writing code right so I'll take you through apex and I'll take you through for some of the slides the idea is to take in concepts one by one try to uh, implement them on on the code level understand very minute things understand big things and then you know proceed as in when we build confidence and then jump into use cases scenarios and all of that all of those stuff right so for for those of you who are seeing this video for the first time i'll suggest you start with the apex masterclass playlist right where we have started uh, uh, right from the beginning from the basics and this is where we have reached after probably 15 or 20 videos right so for those of, who, of you who are continuing, let's talk about what is Apex. Apex is the first multi-tenant on-demand programming language used to develop applications. Those were a lot of words in just one sentence. So let's break it down. Multi-tenant. Why is Apex multi-tenant? Because we are on a shared platform on the cloud, right? So resources that are used by Apex are shared between different orgs sharing an instance. Remember the example of how I explained you what is the point of deployment instances and how different orgs reside, reside under a single instance? All of those orgs have resources that are being shared, meaning you or I do not monopolize the resources. We don't have the entire control on the resources. We are sharing resources, right? It's like sharing uh, the electricity or the, wa or the or the water or, you know, uh, the air conditioner or maybe a generator. If, if it is common for the entire building, it would be multi-tenant. Similarly, Apex is the first multi-tenant programming language. And what does on-demand mean? On-demand means you can talk to the database as and when you want from your Apex code. So uh, with other languages, what you have is you have a separate library wherein you interact with the database and you have your server code integrated with how with 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 the way it needs to connect to the database and you know write queries so they, these are two different two different or two separate things here in apex in your code in your server side code you can actually write queries and fetch whatever records you want from the database you can update whatever is needed on the database right inside your apex class right right inside where you are writing your server side code okay next apex is strongly typed object oriented programming language that allows developers to execute flow and transaction control statements on the salesforce server now again two two heavy words object oriented i hope you already know because it follows the mvc architecture that we have discussed and alongside that it uses the oops concepts right inheritance polymorphism and other concepts so because of this and following the MVC architecture, it is called object oriented. And now what is strongly typed? It does not mean you have to type your code very in a strong manner. No, strongly typed means it does not let you mix the data type declaration and the definitions. What does that mean? Let's say you want to declare a variable which is of type integer, meaning it can only hold numbers. In that case, you cannot use that variable to store text. That is what strongly typed means. What is not a strongly typed language? JavaScript, right? Because you simply say, let I, I can be an integer, I can be an object, I can be a map, I can be anything, right? But that's not the case with Apex. You have to declare and define the variable type and you cannot mix and match based on what your requirement is. If you have defined a Boolean, you have to hold true or false in it. If you have defined an object, you have to hold the object uh, instance in it. All right, so that is what is Apex. It is the first multi-tenant on-demand, strongly typed, object-oriented programming language. Now, if someone asks you, what is Apex? This is what you have to say. All right, now let's look at what all capabilities does Apex provide and what are some key, key distinguishing identifiers that keep it separate or that help you understand or navigate how it is different from the other programming languages. You might be from a .NET background, from a C Sharp background, from a C++, from a C, from a Java background, from a Python background. How do you understand, okay, what is Apex? How is it different, right? First of all, it is proprietary of Salesforce, right? Meaning Apex can only be used within Salesforce. It is not open source, okay? You cannot use it like you use JavaScript or Python, right? It's not open source. It is within the Salesforce promises where you can utilize it, okay? It allows you to write insert, update, and delete commands, meaning anything that you want to do with the database can be done. You want to insert records? Yes. Update records? Yes. Delete commands? Yes. You can, you can do that. It lets you write search queries and 
query language, both Sockle and Saucel. So these are also proprietary of Salesforce, which are tightly integrated with Apex. You can write queries by using Sockle, which we learned about in uh, our master explained series in of Sockle. And another thing we learned in the explained series, Saucel. If you don't know much about it, I'll encourage you to take a look at it if you, if you have time. Salesforce object query language and Salesforce object search language. All right. I'll put a link on this video if you want to refer these uh, explained series. It talks entirely about these two keywords that you see here. Another important thing is looping to process multiple records at a time, right? What if you want to insert five accounts altogether? What if you want to update 75 opportunities? What if you want to create 7500 tasks? What if you want to delete or archive your entire data? Apex lets you write loops so that you can process multiple records at a time. You don't have to work on filling out one record and you know modifying one record at a time. You have the provision of doing it multi records at a time. Okay. It enables locking so that you avoid deadlocks and inconsistent data discrepancies, right? So for example, you and I both want to access the refrigerator to take something out, right? The ideal way is whoever reaches first, takes something out, closes the refrigerator and then the next person uses it, right? So the person, the first person who closes the refrigerator is locking it, right? But if both of us want to take something out from the refrigerator, it's not possible, right? It might be possible if we adjust, but that's not the that's not the point I'm trying to make. But the point I'm trying to ma make is resources should not behave inconsistently. There should not be any data discrepancies, meaning if you are trying to update a record, if you're trying to delete a record and I'm trying to access it, things should not be in parallel, right? Either you delete the record first and then when I try to access it, I get an error. The data does not exist. Or if I go first, I access the record after my access is done, only then you delete the record, right? So you have locking mechanism available in Salesforce in Apex that avoids deadlocks and inconsistent data discrepancies. Okay. It lets you put warnings when, when you try to delete a field, which is referenced in Apex, you'll see warnings. So on Salesforce, right? If you want to delete a field and it has been referenced by your custom code somewhere in your Apex class, you have referenced that field, your field, maybe it in query, maybe while initializing, maybe, uh, you know, updating. If you have used it somewhere, Salesforce will not let you delete the field. It will give you a warning that it is referenced somewhere, remove the reference and only then delete the field. So that keeps the sanctity or keeps your code safe and does not keep unnecessary code inside uh, your Apex classes. Okay, now where is it interpreted, compiled and executed? It's all done on the Lightning platform, which is the platform that Salesforce is on, right? The PaaS framework. What is that PaaS framework? It is Lightning platform. What was it previously called? Force.com. If you have seen the previous videos and you are with me, and if you have not seen them, I'll encourage you to take a look at them and understand what's Lightning platform and all of that. Okay. The next thing again, it is multi-tenant aware. Resources cannot be monopolized, meaning you don't have everything in your hand just for yourself, right? If there are thousand objects, you can probably create these many records. You can probably do these many integration callouts. You can probably do this much of a, a query. You can ha you have governor limits to everything. Why? Because you are a multi you are in a multi tenant architecture. Again, the same example, you're on a, in, a, in a building, right? And let's say the uh, laundry room has just three washing machines, right? So you cannot consume all the three. You have to leave something for the other people, correct? That's similar he, what's, what's here. Since the resources cannot be mono, monopolized, it's only because you're on a multi-tenant architecture. So Apex is also aware. What does this mean? What does this awareness means? It means that you have governor limits on everything. How many ice creams can I have in a day? you can only have one let's say you might have a different uh, um, threshold limit let's say you can only have three right the upper limit to anything that you do perform act behave is your governor limit similarly the governor limit on apex are also there how many records can you query how many queries can you do how many searches can you do how many commands can you execute all of those stuff has some upper limit and that's what makes it multi-tenant aware Okay, the next thing is it is data focused as it combines the database operations and queries in a single transaction.
so you can read data and you can update data in a single transaction in a single transaction you can do both so you took something out from your refrigerator and you push something in so you did two transactions i took something out and put something in right similarly you can read data from your salesforce database and also update at the same time it does not throw you an error it, it does not have to be two different transactions you can do it in the same way okay it's easy to use and easy to test yeah i can say that now but but once you are done with this particular master class and you are confident writing code you'll be able to say that yes uh, himanshu this is easy to use and easy to test i was worried about nothing all right awesome